guys. Once again, thank you for watching Tatiana's Tiny Zoo. I'm Tatiana, and today I'll be teaching you everything I know about box turtles and their care. We'll also be assembling a box turtle enclosure together so you can see what I'm housing my very own box turtle in, and tune in for next week's video where I will be showing you how I set up my outdoor enclosure for her to live in during the summer months. Before I forget, my box turtle actually doesn't have a name yet. So if you guys have any suggestions for a female box turtle, leave them in the comments down below and I might just pick one of them. Okay, let's not waste any more time and get started with our video. You're such a sweet girl. So we're actually gonna be shooting this in my kitchen. We're shooting this out here today because my reptile room is normally like a billion degrees and it's also a disaster in there today. I don't feel like getting all sweaty and gross on camera. So here we are in my kitchen. If you see a mess behind me, no you don't. Okay, let me go get the turtle enclosure. Ugh. We have our turtle enclosure here. I have a knife. <laughs> so we have our turtle enclosure here. I also have a knife to open it with. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and get started. This is an enclosure that I bought off of Amazon. So I don't know what the quality will be. You and I will discover that together. Um, but if you are interested in getting a turtle enclosure like this one, I will link it in the description below. Let's see what we have in here. Oh, I think I have it upside down. Or maybe not. Well, it looks like it's in good shape. It kind of looks like Ikea furniture, <laughs> but, but that's all right. Now everything seems to be in okay condition. I don't see any pieces that are broken yet. Um, maybe a little bit scuffed up, but for like $85, $90, that's kind of to be expected. I'm not looking for the best quality here. And the reason I bought this enclosure specifically was because it was a better um, size for my box turtle. And the bottom here is lined with plastic. So you know that the soil is going to sit in here. It's not going to damage the wood at all, things like that. Can't forget our... And things. And I think that's everything. So I'm gonna just get this box out of our way and we can get building. Okay, let us open up the construction manual and see what we're working with. Front panel A is this guy here. Just gonna put that down for now. Oh, I found it. D and E. Attach C, D, and E to front panel A. I know how to do things. Screw them in. So this would probably be easier with a drill. I don't feel like going to get one right now. Voice over Tatiana here. I'm gonna be in charge of telling you everything you need to know about box turtles while past Tatiana is building this Amazon enclosure. I'm an independent woman. And I don't need anybody's help. Yeah, we'll see about that. Hey, don't you have a disclaimer or something? And before anybody comes at me about how I'm doing this, I'm not a professional builder. I'm just a regular person. So take this for what it is. And that is something I wish I had a drill for. <sighs> Let's get started with our care guide. Box turtles are a terrestrial reptile with a round shell, short legs, and long claws that they use to dig and burrow underground. They have a very unique bottom shell, also called the plastron, that allows them to seal themselves inside when they feel scared or threatened. This is where they get the name box turtle. Well, what do you think about that, pass me? So they made this as idiot proof as possible, which is what I need personally. Huh. I don't think she can hear me. Since I own a three-toed box turtle, this is the species I will be focusing on, but the care amongst the different species is very similar. I'll try to mention any differences throughout the video as well. So 
Three-toed box turtles are native to the central United States. They prefer moist habitats such as hardwood forests, swamps, marshes, or wetlands. These environments have filtered sunlight with much more shady areas than sunny ones. There is plenty of leaf litter and vegetation for cover. Oh, I wish I had a drill. <laughs> yeah, you keep saying that. <clears throat> the eastern box turtle has a very similar habitat preference. However, the ornate box turtle prefers semi-arid environments like prairies or sand hills. It is important to note that providing good care to any box turtle species means that your pet is likely to live well over 50 years, some even living to be 100. Oh, I'm getting a cramp in my leg. Ugh. It is also important to know that box turtles are illegal to keep as pets in some parts of the United States. Please check local laws and ordinances before getting one as a pet, and make sure you are getting the correct species if some are protected in your state. Never take any animals out of the wild. This isn't screwing into anything. What's happening? I'm so confused. Did I miss a step? Oh, <laughs> I missed attaching the back panel. That's funny. I wonder if I have to take this off or if I could just put the back panel on. Don't do that. Okay. Awkward. But we're getting through it. Uh-huh, okay. Maybe let's screw one side in before. Hey, uh, maybe don't screw it in there. Um, sorry, watching myself do this is very distracting. I think we're looking at the model of intelligence here, guys. Wait, wait, wait. I think the realization is gonna kick in in three, two, one. Oh, fun. <sighs> I'm getting secondhand embarrassment just watching myself. Anyways, box turtles love to explore, forage, and burrow. This is why a large enclosure is a must for these reptiles. They are very active and will use as much space as you can give them. If you are keeping them indoors, you want an enclosure that is at least 10 times the length of the adult turtle. However, experts agree that it's best to house your turtle outdoors whenever possible. That's why this slightly smaller enclosure I'm building is for winter and indoor use. And in a future video, I'll be setting up an outdoor enclosure for my turtle as well. Well, how you feeling past me? I'm tired already. Yeah, it's almost like the directions said something about a drill. Box turtles are diurnal, which means they are most active during the day. This also means that they need bright light and UVB during the day to maintain good mental and physical health. Light sources should be left on for 14 hours a day during the summer and 10 hours a day during the winter to mimic their outdoor environments. If you're housing your pet outside, artificial lighting of any kind is not necessary. UVB lighting can be tricky because in order to get the right strength of UVB, which is measured by UV index, otherwise known as UVI, the distance of the bulb from their basking spot is very important. It is strongly recommended to use a salometer to determine the best placement to achieve a UVI of around 3.0 to 4.0 in the basking area. If there's mesh between the lamp and your turtle, the basking area should place the turtle's back 13 to 14 inches below the lamp. If there is no mesh, the distance must be increased to 17 or 18 inches. Can you even see me back here? Okay, clearly I'm going crazy. Indoors, you will need at least one heat lamp for your turtle to bask under. 
If you're housing your pet in an outdoor pen, you do not need heat lamps of any kind. Fox turtles can tolerate nighttime temperatures as low as 50 degrees. However, I recommend bringing your turtle inside if temperatures drop below 60. Eastern and three-toed box turtles prefer a basking temperature of between 85 and 88 degrees and a cool zone between 70 and 75 degrees, while the arid ornate turtle prefers a basking range of 90 to 95 and a cool zone of 70 to 77 degrees. Indoor heating should be turned off at night to allow for a nighttime temperature drop. What do you guys think? Should we check back in? Okay. I need a drill. I can't do this. I can't. I can't do this anymore. I need a drill. Okay. I have a drill. So hopefully I don't ruin this. Let's find out. Hey, nice, that's so much easier. Okay, should have had that from the beginning. I will not be advising on brumating your box turtles. Some owners allow their turtles to brumate outdoors over winter by letting them dig underground and sleep there during the colder months. Some owners put their turtles into the fridge to simulate the drop in temperature. Some owners don't brumate their turtles at all. Since this is my first ever box turtle, I am not an expert in their hibernation habits. I urge you to do plenty of your own research before deciding which brumation method is right for you and your pet. All right, I'm motivated. I got my drill. We're gonna, we're doing good. That's good, because our care guide isn't done yet. Three-toed and eastern box turtles do best in an environment with higher humidity levels and plenty of moisture. They prefer an average of 60 to 80% humidity, with daytime humidity never dropping below 51%. Meanwhile, ornate box turtles can tolerate drier conditions, but still prefer a humidity averaging between 30 and 60%. For all box turtles, it is better to use a naturalistic substrate that is similar to what is found in their native habitat. In other words, you will need some kind of richly organic, moisture-retentive soil. Because box turtles are a digging species, this substrate should be layered at least 4 inches deep in an indoor enclosure and 12 inches deep in an outdoor enclosure. The mix I use is topsoil, play sand, and eco-earth, but there are plenty of other appropriate options that you can find. Oops. Well, the wood cracked right there, which is what I thought would happen when I used the drill, but... Cheap wood. Not much I can do about it. Box turtles are omnivores, and their diet should consist of 50% plants and 50% protein. They can have a huge variety of foods including fruits, leafy greens, vegetables, bugs, eggs, and sometimes even soft dog foods. I'll include a link in the description box to a full list of safe and unsafe food options for your box turtles. It's very important to feed a wide variety of foods. Not only is this good enrichment for your pet, but box turtles are also notorious for becoming very picky and switching up their diet helps prevent them from refusing foods. Your box turtle should always have access to fresh drinking water, and most turtle owners agree that they benefit from a weekly soak to keep them from getting dehydrated. I've noticed my turtle only drinks when I'm actively pouring her fresh water, and if it's stagnant, she seems to completely ignore it. I think we're finally reaching the end of our care guide, and it looks like I'm getting close to finishing the enclosure itself. I look kind of frustrated. Let's listen. is sandwiched between the pieces of wood so it doesn't come off cleanly because it can't because it's been screwed into it um, so I'm having to cut along the edge with my kitchen knife but the kitchen knife is sharp enough to actually damage this crappy wood so I don't really know what they expect to happen here I guess it is what it is but yeah, but I need to get the plastic off before I attach, attach this lamp holder, otherwise it'll be impossible to get it off. 
That's a design flaw on their part. But I guess you get what you pay for. All right. We're done. We did it. I think. I think we did it. Let's do a really quick review of just the building process and my initial thoughts on this enclosure. Um, it's clearly very cheap. The wood is really cheap. Whatever the varnish or stain that's on it is really cheap. I don't think the stain itself is going to last that long. And if you're rough on this enclosure, it's very easy to scuff. I already scuffed it in a couple places just by rotating the pieces and putting them on my tile floor. So in that sense, you have to be very careful with this uh, enclosure. The overall assembly of this enclosure wasn't too hard. I do recommend having a screwdriver because as soon as I got this, it became a lot easier. Um, that's pretty obvious, but I thought I could screw it in by hand and then I got really tired and didn't want to do that anymore. Needless to say, it was a lot easier with the screwdriver. The directions have a lot of spelling mistakes in it, which makes me believe that it's not from the United States or from like an English speaking country. So just be aware of that, maybe read and then reread the directions to make sure you're following them correctly because I put one of the sides on incorrectly and didn't notice until I already had two screws in it and I had to unscrew it and start that side all over again. So just make sure you're reading it carefully. Otherwise, um, besides it coming scuffed and being really easy to damage and then whatever is going on with this film that is like impossible to get off, I think it's okay. I think you get what you pay for with this enclosure. I think it'll serve my purpose that I need it to right now, and then when I'm financially able to, I can get a much higher quality enclosure, but it's gonna be more expensive. Now, as for positive notes about this enclosure, uh, one thing I really like is the wire top seems stable enough so that I can put a UVB light across it and maybe even set my tortoise food up on here and I don't have any concerns about it falling through or warping. It also has a really nice lamp holder so that her heat can, can hang up there and I can even put a thermostat in through the thick wires on top. So that is really nice. Uh, I also really like that it latches on both sides. Both halves have a lid and they can be opened and accessed from the top, but it also has that latch. Uh, another really nice thing about this enclosure is that right in the directions it says you can buy two of them and actually attach them to each other. So you can make a much longer habitat if you've got a lot of tortoises or a lot of turtles that are living together. You can take this panel right here out and easily attach two of these together. Um, and that will give you more of an affordable way to expand your turtle enclosure and give them more space to roam around. I personally only have the one box turtle, so I don't need the expansion, but if you do have a couple of them, that would be something to consider. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else positive to say about it. It also has a very strange smell to it, like a very manufactured weird smell. I don't know if it's from whatever factory this was sitting in or storage facility that it was in, or it's the actual stain that they put on the wood to give it this gray color. Um, but it does smell really, really bad. So I'm gonna let it air out for a while before I put my turtle in there. Uh, Cause I don't know what that smell is or where it's coming from. So that's another thing to be aware of. All right, you guys, before I end the video, I wanted to give you a little update on her enclosure. It's been set up for a number of weeks now and I just wanted to show it off to you guys. So let's go ahead and open it up. This is propped up like this because um, I've got her humidity, her little fogger running. That's kind of why it looks spooky like it's Halloween in here. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So I've turned that off so that we can see in here. <sighs> Get some of the fog out of here. As you can see, this is her cool side over here. It's got her water dish. I'm just using a ceramic like flower pot saucer. 
And then it's got a leaf pile, and she's actually buried underneath this leaf pile right now. This is where she always hangs out. I always see her, or don't see her, underneath these leaves. Um, sometimes she comes out to bask, but a lot of times she likes to stay buried in there. Box turtles love leaf piles and leaf litter because they live on the forest floor. So she feels right at home with her pile of leaves here. I highly recommend if you're going to get a box turtle to give them a pile of leaves. Um, you'll notice the inside of the enclosure is a different color now. I did go ahead and seal it with about three coats of rubber like pond liner paint. I was just really worried about how cheap this wood was and I did not think that it would hold up to the humidity requirements that my species of box turtle needs. If you have an ornate turtle that requires lower humidity, you could probably get away with out sealing it, but I wanted to be safe. And then I also lined the bottom with plastic because I didn't want any water pooling down there. Even though there is that plastic tray down there, I didn't really trust it. So there is plastic at the very bottom of this. And so on this side here, this is her hot side. It doesn't actually have plants in it. You're seeing a reflection from the tank behind me. But I have two lights up there. This one here is her heat bulb. And this one here is the VivTech UVB that I'm using. It is a little high up for her, um, but since this mesh isn't like true mesh, I decided to go on the safe side and put it a little bit higher. Inside here, she has a little cave that she doesn't really like to use, and I have a cuddle bone in the corner for her. That is just something that helps box turtles get their calcium intake as well as file their beaks down a little bit. This side's pretty boring. Um, she doesn't use it a lot. She is just a couple days out from moving into her outdoor enclosure, so I didn't go too crazy decorating this side. Um, she mostly just comes over here to bask and then I catch her in this cave sometimes, but not always. I think in the winter I'll put some um, plants or maybe fake plants in here to just give her more coverage and feel more comfortable. But yeah, that is what her current setup indoors looks like. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week about my lovely box turtle. Again, if you wanted to suggest a name for her, be sure to leave that in the comment section down below and maybe I'll just pick one of them. She has been a wonderful education ambassador for my outreach programs and I'm so excited to move her into her outdoor enclosure. Box turtles make really amazing pets for the right owner. Please do your research before getting one for yourself. A ton of these turtles get surrendered to reptile rescues nationwide because people just don't understand how long they can live. This is a lifelong commitment and you might even have to write them into your will because these guys can sometimes outlive humans. Needless to say, they're a big commitment and if you're considering getting one as a pet, please do your research in advance and consider checking with your local reptile rescue because they might have a couple of these up for adoption already. The links to all of the products that I've used for this video and her enclosure are going to be linked in the description box below, as well as a link to my Patreon page. This week my Patreon backers actually got a sneak peek at her future outdoor enclosure, but more on that in a later video. Again, a huge thank you to my Patreon backers. Your support means the world to me and I couldn't do this without you. Well, I think that's all we have for you guys today. We'll see you in the next video.